Hey everybody, I welcome all of you to episode number 2 of Alchemy. Now in this video, I want to give you a highly detailed introduction to what the groundwork is and how it actually works. Now for me personally, this has been the single most important piece of work that I've done in my entire life from a standpoint of personal growth and development. See, we live in a society where most of us are not clear on what we want in life. But I do know that there are people who dare to dream of a marvelous life for themselves even if they do not know what exactly it is that they want to do. I know this because I was one of those people. I had the drive, I had the ambition, and I had the will to work as hard as I possibly could to do something amazing in life. The problem was, I just did not know what it was that I wanted to do. As my friend put it once, it was like as if I was a perfectly working ship in the middle of a sea without a map. Now, all that I knew was that I was meant to do something. Now, I do not know what that something was. But all that I knew was that I was meant to do something that would help me escape mediocrity. If you are not clear on what you want in life and all you hear is the little voice inside of you telling you that you are meant to do something amazing in life, then I might have something that you might find useful. So yes, let's dive right in and explore what the groundwork is. The groundwork is the name of the chunk of work that we must do before we reach a place mentally where we are able to understand our life's purpose and live it out effectively. It just consists of two parts. The first part is discovering your life's purpose by learning the art of listening to the divinity inside of you. Now, I know that this sounds a little too hokey pokey, but please stick with me. Now, the first part is that. Now, the second part is developing a very strong character by walking the path of self-improvement. So yes, those are the only two parts of groundwork. Now, I want to tell you upfront that doing the groundwork has crazy benefits, but it will require you to make sacrifices and put in a lot of time and effort. So I will tell you how this piece of work has helped me in my own life. But I want to tell you also that if you do not do your own curls, you must do your own curls. If you do not do your own curls, you will never reap the benefits. And I genuinely hope that you do your own curls and reap the benefits and live a life on your own terms. Now, before we start discussing what the groundwork is, I want to briefly talk to you all about the one resource that no amount of money can buy, and that is time. Now, without judging yourself, reflect on this question. By your own definition of wasting time, how much time do you normally waste? Think about this for a while. A recent study showed that an average young adult spends about four hours every single day on meaningless tasks. That's 28 hours a week, and that's 60 days a year. Just think about it. How much time do you waste? And how do you feel about it? Now, if you made it a point to not waste your time and to utilize the time that you normally waste on doing tasks that will benefit you, how much more efficient could you be? How much more could you get done? Now, reflecting on this is important because the type of person you become does not just affect you. It has a huge impact on every single person you have a network with, especially your loved ones. Now, if you think long term, and you should think long term, wasting your time or spending time wisely could mean the difference between a lot of things. It could mean the difference between you being able to send your kids to the best schools and universities or having to struggle with paying bills. It could mean the difference between you being able to provide your family with the best healthcare facilities or not even being able to provide them with the basic necessities in life. It could mean a life. It could mean the difference between a life of struggle and a life of blissful abundance. So yes, think about it wisely. Our actions always have a greater impact than we can comprehend. 
This is so very basic, but I must say it. Do not waste time, please. Do not waste time. If you are still at a point in your life where you waste time as if you have the gift of unlimited tomorrows, I really want you to think about it and understand the fact that our time here is limited. Now, if you are at a point where you do not want to be wasting time, but you also don't know what exactly you should do, I invite you to do the groundwork. So how exactly does the groundwork work? This is how the groundwork actually works. So yes, how exactly does the groundwork work? Let's touch on the empty vessel for a bit. In the previous video, we've already established that our beliefs are highly influenced by what we know based on everything we've seen, heard, felt and experienced. And most of this has been a product of circumstance. Now reference points are all the experiences of your life that have been recorded within your nervous system. Everything you've seen, heard, tasted, smelt and touched. All of this stored away inside of your brain. Some reference points, you've picked them up consciously others unconsciously. Some have resulted from experiences that you've had for yourself and others consist of information that you've heard from others. A belief is nothing but a sense of certainty about something. Now, if you believe that you are intelligent, it is because you have certain reference points in your knowledge base to support that sense of certainty. Maybe you've had the experience of tackling mental challenges successfully like acing a test or running a business well. This is true for all the beliefs that you have for yourself, whether they are positive or negative. Any belief that you have about yourself and the world, it is because you have certain reference points in your knowledge base that support your belief. For example, if you believe that you are smart, maybe it is because you've mastered a very difficult subject and now you know for sure that you are smart. If you believe that you are driven, Maybe it's because you've had phases in your life where you would wake up at 4 a.m. every single morning and go and work out. And now you know for sure that you are someone who is extremely driven. Now, on the contrary, if you believe that you are dumb, maybe you failed a test in your school and your teacher labeled you dumb and now you believe yourself to be dumb. Maybe if you are someone who considers yourself lazy, Maybe you set an alarm for 4 a.m., hit the snooze button until the sun went up, and now you identify yourself as lazy so you don't even try. Now, if you believe that the world is a beautiful place, it's because you have reference points in your knowledge base to support that belief. If you believe that the world is a nasty place, it is again because you have reference points in your knowledge base to support that belief. Now, can you see how all of this is working? Based on the events that have happened in the past, you derive a sense of identity for yourself and the world. Now the problem is, because of the information that we've consumed unconsciously, there's a high chance that we have reference points that results in us having disempowering beliefs. And we must make it a point to replace those reference points with reference points which will allow us to have empowering beliefs. See, reference points can be insights, experiences, and phases. Let me explain. A person can have a very rough social life because of the way he constantly talks more than is necessary. Now, chances are he can come across an insight in a book on communication that talks about conversation generosity and being a good listener. After having come across this insight, he could then go on to change the way he shows up in the world and change the way he communicates with other people and this could drastically improve his social life. This is an example of a reference point in the form of an insight. There could be a person who never thought about running a cafe but while on vacation he could come across one of the loveliest cafes he's ever been to and that could inspire him to run a cafe of that sort. Now this reference point in the form of an experience inspired and drove him to open up a cafe. That's an example of a reference point in the form of an experience. If you identify yourself as lazy, but if you make it a point to create a phase in your life through sheer willpower, 
to wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. and go and work out, your identity will shift. You will no longer call yourself lazy because you will have seen yourself work hard and no one can tell you otherwise. You will know for sure that you are someone who is driven because you will have seen yourself leave the comfort of your bed to go and lift weights. Now this is a reference point in the form of a phase. The groundwork is about expanding the reference points that are available within your life by consciously seeking out information and experiences that will expand the sense of who you are and what you are capable of until you have the correct reference points that will allow you to understand the art of listening to the divinity inside of you and develop a strong character. There are people who know about this art but they do start it at the empty vessel which means all of us can learn this art and there are people with very strong characters but they weren't always that way and this means that all of us can develop strong characters. Once you understand this art of listening to the divinity inside of you, you can never be wrong on what you want in this life. And once you have a strong character, you can do anything that you want to do, as long as what you want to do does not hurt others. This whole listening to the divinity inside of you stuff sounds really hokey pokey. I know. Now, there's no way to understand whether or not people actually have something within themselves that they can turn to for guidance until and unless one experiences it for themselves. I too was very skeptical about this at first, but now I've started believing in this thing which sounds magical and at first absurd because I have gotten the opportunity to learn this art of listening to my soul. And the good news is, the people that I've learned from, you have access to them as well. Now, understanding and learning about this art is one half of the groundwork. And what has helped me in my own journey was reading books, taking classes online and meditating. I'll talk about this in detail a bit later. The second half of groundwork is developing a strong character. Now, what do I mean by a strong character? I simply mean a conscience guided by the four cardinal virtues. I came across this one in the meditations of Marcus Aurelius, there is a mention of the four cardinal virtues, courage, justice, practical wisdom, and prudent self-control. Now think about this for a while. What is impossible for a person who has all four of these virtues? And if one person can have it, why can't all of us have it? See, the art of listening to your soul can be learned and a strong character can be developed. If you can know what exactly it is that you want to do in life and you have a strong character and you have these four cardinal virtues in your bag, what is impossible for you? What can you not do? My conviction is that doing the groundwork is beneficial for every single one of us. It does not matter how young or old you are. It does not matter where you come from. It does not matter what nationality you belong to. The groundwork is beneficial for all of us. Now, once we begin to start doing the groundwork, the first thing and the most important part is to get rid of something called possibility blindness. Now, this is important because if we do not believe in the mere possibility, of being capable enough to live life on our own terms, we won't even begin to get serious with doing the groundwork. Now, to explain to you what possibility blindness is, I want to share with you a little bit of my story. I had a dream of becoming a professional footballer. Now, quite frankly, I have never enjoyed anything as much as I've enjoyed playing football. I was crazy about the sport ever since I was a kid. At around 14 years of age, my dad walked up to me one day and asked me whether I wanted to join a football academy. Now, at that time, I was good at playing football. I had played multiple tournaments and won quite a few of them. But I was not the best player in the squad. I had teammates who were way better than I was. I had a burning passion for the sport and waking up early in the morning, sacrificing my sleep to go and train with the team was not a difficult task at all. But being faced with a question of that magnitude at such a young age, it was overwhelming. 
Joining a football academy meant leaving behind everything I knew until that point in my life. My family, my school, my friends, everything. Now that I look back, the way I assessed and analyzed the situation was completely wrong. I compared myself, I compared how good I was at playing football to how good I was at academics. What happened was, I made the wrong decision. Even though I had all the support I needed from my parents, I shattered my own dream. Now upon reflection, the reason why I made the wrong decision was actually because of a disease. Les Brown calls this possibility blindness. I judged myself based on who I was rather than who I could have become. I did not understand the simple relationship between effort and reward. I did not understand that if I worked hard, I would have gotten better. I did not know that there were people before me who were at the same place that I was at, but decided to chase their goals, worked hard for it, and were now playing professional football. On a subconscious level, I had the fear of not being good enough. I must tell you, if I could go back in time and make that decision again, going to a football academy would be a no-brainer. But life doesn't work that way, does it? Had I gone to a football academy, the course of my life would have changed forever. I cannot go back and change things. But I'm now moving forward with a conviction that anything is possible in the world. And the only thing that I had to do in order to understand this was make myself aware of the fact that there, there have been people who have doubts, who have insecurities, who have fears, just like all of us do, but have still worked their way up the ladder of success. The reason why I'm sharing this whole story with you is because I know that there are many people who suffer from the same disease that I was suffering from, possibility blindness. Now, I genuinely don't want you to suffer from it. See, I understand that there are people who are depressed. There are people who are suicidal. There are people who are anxious, uninspired. There are people who are confused. There are people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol. But what I want to make clear is that life happens, right? Life happens to every single one of us. But what happens to us never makes the difference. What makes the difference is how we choose to respond to what happens to us. That is always in our power. People go through absolutely devastating phases in their lives, but no matter how bad things get, we never lose this power of choosing how we respond to what happens to us. See, I really don't want to sound like I'm preaching. I'm not a motivational speaker, and I'm not doing this for likes and subscribers and followers and comments and all of the other stuff that comes along with this. The only reason why I've decided to start creating and posting content is because the truth is actually very plain and simple. Once you get rid of possibility blindness, you change the way you set goals for yourself. You set big, bold and audacious goals for yourself. And once you set different goals for yourself, you automatically become someone who lives life in a different way. And when you do things differently on a very on a day-to-day -day basis, the results you get are going to be different. Now, getting rid of possibility blindness is only a matter of consuming information selectively. You are not even a part of this equation. All you have to do is sit back, open up YouTube and watch the correct stuff or read a book, read the correct stuff. Now, I want to share with you how I would have done the groundwork had I gotten the opportunity to go back in time when I just graduated from high school. And this is going to be for the next video. If you want a starting point, start right here. You have access to the internet. Open up YouTube and look up the stories of Lisa Nichols and Les Brown. The stories of these two people have impacted me in innumerable ways. See, the logic here is very simple. If you feel uninspired, just watch the inspirational speeches of different people. If you feel like you are not motivated at all, watch motivational videos. If you are facing fears, just dive deep into the stories of people who were facing fears as well and then learn from them how to deal with those fears. Now, keep going from one video of this type to another and do it as many times as you have to until you reach a point where you actually know for yourself that there have been people who faced hardships in their lives but have dealt with them and turned their ordinary lives into something extraordinary. Now doing this is absolutely crucial. 
Getting rid of possibility blindness is not difficult at all, but you must spend time on it if you want to reap the benefits. Craft your knowledge base. Spend your time to craft your knowledge base. Don't just try to learn about the things that your school or your college wants you to learn about. Add reference points that will set you up for success, not just financial success. I am talking about financial freedom, but I'm also talking about the kind of success which is not glorified by mainstream media. Things like a loving family, vibrant health, a tight circle of friends that inspire you, the power to wake up in the morning and deciding how you will spend the day, things like peace of mind, nonchalance, all of these intangible things are actually what make life beautiful. Do not buy into the lies of the society. I've said this earlier and I'm saying it again. Everything that I'm doing here is an experiment because all that I want is more people to break the chains on their minds and live freely. But I believe that there is a very smart and effective way to do this. Now, I want to tell you all about three fundamental changes that have helped me in my own life and I suggest that you consider making them if you haven't done so already. The first fundamental change is very basic and simple. It is just about deciding that you are not gonna waste time. Now see, the, the way you spend your time determines what kind of person you turn out to be and the type of person you become has a huge impact on every single person that you have a network with, especially your loved ones. Now the only thing that we need to do is make sure that we are spending time and living life in a way that will make sure that it will bring about a positive change in ourselves and other people. The second fundamental change that I'm about to tell you about is I think the most important part of being an effective student. It is about having an open mind. See Socrates once said that a person cannot learn that which he thinks he already knows. One of the most important lessons I've learned in life is that every single person that we meet knows something that we don't know about and we can learn from them if we choose to. The world can be our library if we let it. This change is about understanding that learning is a constant perpetual process and it never stops. Education does not stop after you graduate from high school, does not stop after you get a college degree or even after getting a PhD. It is a lifelong process and we can learn until the day we die. The third fundamental change that I want to tell you about is taking ownership of everything in your life, including what you know. Now, if we are being honest, all of us know that we are responsible for our own lives. The slightly tricky part about taking ownership is that it is a spectrum effect. For example, you can be slightly angry or you can be extremely angry, right? There is a spectrum. Similarly, you can be slightly hungry or you can be extremely hungry. In the same manner, you can take slight ownership or you can take extreme ownership of your life. Now, taking extreme ownership of your life simply means taking care of every single thing in your life, including what time you go to bed every night, what you wear, what movies you watch, what kind of songs you listen to, and also, and most importantly, what you know. Yes, I must emphasize on this because this is absolutely crucial. You must take care of what you know or what you do not know because no one else is going to do it for you. See, you can learn about a lot of different things. You can learn about how to communicate with people better. You can learn about how people have dealt with hardships in their lives and made something amazing out of it. You could learn how to manage your time better. You could learn how to manage your finances better. And you could also learn how to find peace within, even when there is a lot of turmoil outside. But the only way you're gonna learn about these subjects is if you make it a point to educate yourself about these. There was something I came across in one of the books I read which was highly practical but a little bit gross. It was about seeing things for what they actually are, removing all the glamour of the words surrounding the subject and seeing it for actually what it is. What I mean to see is, look at grilled chicken for what it actually is. It is nothing but a dead bird. I know it sounds a little bit gross but it's practical. Grapes, when they are fermented, is wine. Wine is simply fermented grapes. Pork ribs are nothing but a dead pig served on a plate. Now, if you get rid of all the glamour of the words surrounding a subject, you can see it clearly for what is happening. Now, apply this logic to the cases of people 
who go to get a college degree without understanding what they want in life. There is so much of learning that we all can do in order to become better human beings and live more effectively. I genuinely feel sad looking at people who go to different parts of the world in order to get education but end up wasting their time on meaningless tests and assignments with the hopes of pleasing the professors who themselves do not know what their lives are about. See, the youth has a lot of power and I have a lot of faith in my generation. The education system is broken and the clock is ticking away. Most people who teach in these institutions do not care much about what you know or do not know. Why would they care about it? They don't owe you anything at all. Understand this fact and stop wasting your time. 2021 is less than a month away and I dare you to take ownership of your life and get busy with your own journey. What you know, your knowledge base is your responsibility. I've given you a fair idea of what the groundwork is. Now, I've done it for almost two years now and I've only drawn one conclusion from it. I don't know enough and I must keep on learning and improving. That's the conclusion I've drawn from about two years of doing the groundwork. Now, I will deconstruct and tell you how you can incorporate the groundwork in your own life. It can be done even if you have a super busy life, but it will require you to put in a lot of time and effort. It'll be way easier and more effective if you do not have other things to take care of, as in the case of a gap year. If you are considering taking a gap year anytime soon, my suggestion to you would be take it without thinking twice, but make sure you spend time wisely. The groundwork only has two parts. First one is discovering your life's purpose or your personal calling by learning the art of listening to the divinity inside of you. And the second part is developing a super strong character by walking the path of self-improvement. Now, if this appeals to you, I will show you exactly how to do it and how to spend your days in the next video. To my regular viewers, I wanna thank you for watching until the end. And if you are new here, I want to tell you that I have a playlist called Alchemy where I'm trying to deconstruct the process of being able to understand your life's calling and living it out effectively. So do consider subscribing to my channel. If you liked what you just watched and if you feel so compelled and if you found it beneficial, do share it with the people you know. It would mean a lot to me. Until next time, my friends, take care.